Welcome back to the channel, everybody. So today I'm doing a first impressions look at these four little games that are from Galen's Games that are heading to Kickstarter. These are part of his Mint Tin series of games. Um, so the first one here is Verdant, Arizona. Uh, then we have here Dice Clash. The third one here is Mint Tin Monster Mashup. And then the final one here is Heritage Farms. So these are all two-player games, and they play in about 20 minutes or less, or so give or take. And, um, you know, these they are fairly light. They Most of them involve dice, or uh, so Verdant, Arizona is a set collection game. Uh, Monster Mashup is a uh, battler where you're using dice and you're putting these two monsters together and trying to kill three of your opponent's monsters. And then you have Dice Clash where you're selecting a character and you're using your dice to defeat your opponent by placing it on different parts of your grid. And then finally the last one, Heritage Farms, is a uh, collection game where you're trying to get... A, a complete set to two of your markets. Let me show you how each of these games play, and then I'm gonna let you know what I uh, initially thought of each of them. Okay, so this is Verdant, Arizona. Now, this is a set collection game where you're trying to collect different pictures of cacti. And of course, you see these numbers here. Now, when there's a nest token, you're going to place these wren on them. Now, the first player is going to take the car, and they're going to place it anywhere on the map. It's got to be between two cars. So when you when you look at it, I'm trying to get this one. Okay, here we go. So let's just say I put it here. And now it, depending on it's facing east or west is very important. The same if you're going to place it here. It's got to be facing north or south. And then the second player is going to take their turn. So you're gonna, you can move this up to two times. So let's just say I'm going to go... Uh, Let's say I want to go like one, one, two. I, I, I think uh, the more, I, I'm just giving you an example. The movement could be wrong. But, or you could, uh, like if I was down here, I could go one, two. Now, depending on where I land, I can take one of these cards. So I'm going to take this card and put it and then right here and take the rent. Now, you're making a four by four grid. That's, and, and that's when the game is going to end when everyone is done making the four by four grid. Now, when you do that, you're gonna take another card and place it face down. And then your opponent is gonna be doing the same thing, going going and collecting different uh, cards. Now, what the Ren token does is if you spend it, you can move an additional turn. Now, let's just say uh, these are all face down. Uh, bah, 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 bah. This, for example, I just make believe these are all face down, and I was unable to get to a cacti I needed to to get to. Uh, in uh, so you know what? Let's uh, let's do that. Let's put everything face down. Now uh, let's just say I couldn't get to this in two or three turns. So then I would put a rent token on everything that is open, and even if it doesn't have a, a nest token on it. And then I will flip all of these over. So now, like I stated before, and of course you would put the nest tokens on, uh, the, the rent tokens on anyone that has a nest. Now, so let's go back into scoring. Now, when you're scoring, you, have, you want to try and put everything in ascending order because it's very important. So uh, let's just say I have like this. And I'm just gonna, again, I'm just putting for an example, two, three, four. Excuse me, I know it's a little messy. And we're just gonna, I'm, again, I'm just showing, showing scoring. This is not normally how it plays, but Okay. All right. So this is how, let's say this is how my game looks at the end. So I'm going to score a point for every row or column that's in ascending order. So this will be one point 
automatically. Now, some of them have geckos in it. Now, if I were to have a row or column in ascending order that had at least one gecko in it, that would also give me another point. Again, this would not because this is not in ascending order or because of these cards. So now, you would get two points for every row that has a quadrant. So let's just say, for example, I had this example, this right here. This would give me two points. Uh, now, there's also some advanced scoring that you would get one point for every row or column with a single color. So if I had all this, like, like if, it was, if it was like this, I would get automatically one more point. And now the tiebreaker goes for the person who has the most rent. So, uh, yeah, that's Verdant, Arizona. Okay, so this is Monster Mashup. I already set up for my opponent. Uh, this is going to be me right here. I chose my mad scientist. There are several mad scientists in the game that you can choose from. They all have special abilities. Now, at the beginning of the game, you're going to choose your mad scientist. And we're all going to draw three cards here from this deck. Now, you're gonna, they each have a front and a back. So you're going to mash up the different so cards that you want to make. So let's, for example, say I did this. I made the Griff Angela. He's going to have four health, four intelligence, which gives him four energy, one special attack, and 10 speed, which is helpful with tiebreakers. I also have this special ability here. Opponent rolls more than a seven. You're gonna steal one energy from your opponent. So now, the first thing we're gonna do is the roll phase. We're gonna roll these die. So I rolled a one, one. Anytime you roll a one, you're going to instantly gain one energy. So I have seven here, so I get, let's go up to five. Then we're gonna move on to the boost phase. Now, during the boost phase, you're gonna either boost your monster, you're gonna defend, or you're going to hit the panic button. So if you want to boost your monster, at the count of three, you're gonna uh, hold up how many fingers you want to uh, uh, boost. So if let's say one, two, three, I want to boost him by three. I have to roll, set this to three, put it right here, and I have to spend three energy. So now I have a total of ten. Uh, I can either defend. When you defend, you you just hold your fist up, and in this damage phase, you will reduce the arena damage to one. If your opponent and uh, now the the last thing is slamming on the table, which means you're gonna hit the panic button. So this will force both players to reroll the attack die and keep those results. But here's the thing, if my opponent defended instead of uh, either boosting or holding the panic button, I'm going to lose and my monster is going to be killed. So now let's just say I, uh, we both boosted, we have uh, 10 and let's just say my opponent has here uh, six and decided to use one boost so their boost will go right there uh, so now they have seven and of course I beat them so this is gonna be the damage phase during the damage phase you're gonna add your boost die to your attack die, like I just stated before for the attack total and of course the player with the higher total the higher total is going to win now if you're tied this is where the speed comes in whoever is the fastest is going to win the tie uh, and of course the loser is going to take damage equal to the arena level. So we're on arena level one, so they would only take one damage. Now, if they lost by an amount that's equal to or greater than the uh, special attack, then they're going to take damage also equal to that special attack. So this comes in very handy as well. Um, now, if the player defended, of course, they're going to reduce the arena damage to one when, when uh, determining the, uh, the damage. So this will only be either, either zero or one damage. Now, when the, 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 the opponent's uh, a monster dies, or if your monster dies, you're going to collect the head. When you collect the head, uh, the first person to collect three heads is going to win the game. Now, let's say my monster died. I would have to flip this over. And I would get this ability. And of course, if my monster defeated uh, the, the other monster, I would flip this back to where it belongs. So you're going to keep doing this until somebody claims three heads. Okay, so this is how Heritage Farms is going to be set up. You have your, your boat right here. Your opponent's going to be sitting across from you. Now, your farms are going to be on this side. So this is my farms right here. My farmers are all going to be placed on the farms. 
and of course, their, uh, my opponent's farms are here with my markets next to it. Now, you're gonna have three types of goods. Uh, yellow is corn, red is a fox, and uh, white is the chicken. So what I wanna do is I wanna get my market, two of my markets that have three of my goods, the corn, the chicken, and the fox in two of them. Now, I could also lose if I lose one of each type of good, the game ends immediately. So what would I do on my turn? So I would put my boat anywhere. So I wanna put it uh, right, let's say I wanna put it right here. And I have to put it somewhere where I have a farmer. So I would take my farmer and I have to take one good. So let's just say I'm gonna take the chicken and I'm gonna place my, my boat right over here. So my farm is gonna go here, it's gonna go on these, this bonus marker right here, I'll go over what each one does, and then I'm gonna place my chicken here. Now, when it comes to this spot right here, I'm gonna flip this over. Now when my farmer leaves this spot, I'm gonna get this bonus. I'll go over what each bonus does in a bit. Now here's the tricky part. How do I lose my goods? So, like I stated before, we have here are the corn, the chicken, and the fox. And my opponent is still here on the farm, on their farm. Now, of course, nature takes its place. So now if my, farm, if my opponent's farmer were to ever leave this spot right here, so let's just say his boat came and he went somewhere else. The fox here is gonna eat my chicken. So this is gonna be eaten. Now, let's just say it was the other way around. The chicken is going to eat the corn, and of course the corn uh, affects the fox. So you got a little bit of a rock, paper, scissor uh, element to it as well. So that's how you would lose pieces. Now again, uh, the first person to have uh, one of each good on two of their markets is gonna win the game. So yeah, very simple. Now let's go over what the bonuses are. So we have here four different types of bonuses. The first one here is you're gonna fit two farmers on a market. The next one here is move a cube up or down one card. Over here we have move your farmer up or down one card. And then over here we have you uh, move your opponent's boat. So yeah, this is a very strategic little game. Again, that is pretty simple, but there is a lot of strategy to here, a little and a lot of, uh, a lot of bit, of, a lot of meanness here. Um, so yeah, that is Heritage Farms. Okay, so this is Dice Clash. Now in Dice Clash, you're gonna pick a character. So I have to spawn here. I'm going up against the samurai, and you're gonna get your corresponding grid, and you're gonna have your set of nine dice. So in this game, you're going to roll all your dice here. So let's just, and you're gonna try to keep it secret from your opponent before. Uh, for the rules sake, I'm just showing you here how it plays. So let's say my opponent does this. Uh, now, whoever goes first, they're gonna take one of their die and they're going to place it right here in, the, uh, put it right here in the middle. So that's my attack. So now my opponent has to come up with something better than a five. So they could do, let's just say, let's go five uh, here. So now they got six defense. So they place it here. I give them the six defense, or they can place it here. Um, so you're essentially going back and forth, trying to do better than your opponent. So again, I could uh, go right here and be like, oh, now I got an attack of five, and my opponent is gonna do the same. Oh, now I got an attack of six. So now, if they were to place a six, so I don't have, uh, I have a six here. So let's say I have this six here. Actually, I don't wanna use that one. Uh, I have a six right here. Now, if I were to put a six here, or well, let's go here for this, I get the seven. They can instantly parry. So they could put this here, take their die, place it anywhere, and they would parry and attack back with three. And of course, I would have to respond. Now, the reason there are different colored dies um, is if I use a white die, it allows me to reroll the rest of my die that I haven't used. If I use a red die, it gives me my special ability. So mine here is I can add plus one or minus one to each die. 
Now let's just so show everything over here. Now everyone has a little ability. So this one is the defense. So this adds plus one or minus one to the defense, plus one to the uh, attack. And of course, this adds numbers to your die. So plus two, plus or minus one. Uh, now, let's just say I was not able to uh, uh, beat my opponent. I couldn't give, get out the higher die. I would flip this over to the adrenaline side, and now my ability would be a little bit stronger. Again, each of them have a different ability. I'm not going to go over every single one. Uh, but now this one says I point to a spot on my opponent's grid, and they are no longer allowed to use that power. The first person to defeat their opponent twice wins. Okay, so as you can see, these are all very simple, easy games to table. I really appreciate the packaging. I like that I could take these games anywhere and pretty much play anywhere unless you want to play in a plane. I don't know, that might be uh, a problem with some of these. But, um, yeah, I really had fun with all They all play very quickly. I, I would say give or take 20 minutes. I think the one that went the longest for me would be maybe Monster Mashup, maybe Heritage Farms, because there's so much back and forth with that one. Um, I didn't mention with Heritage Farms, there is an advanced mode where like the chickens could turn into zombies and stuff, so it adds a little bit more complexity and uh, strategy to the game. So let me go over each one individually. Uh, so Verdant, Arizona was a very pleasant little game. I enjoyed the whole set collection. I mean, set collection is not my go-to type of game, but... You know, all of these games have a lot of player interaction. It's, you know, going back in Verdant, you're trying to derail your opponent and trying to get them, you know, you don't want them to get that collection. Um, but also making that little puzzle in front of you was a lot of fun. And the fact that it plays so quick, you know, it's, it's a nice game to have in your collection. It's a good game. I think my, my, that my wife, she enjoyed playing. Um, but yeah, Verd really like Verdant, Arizona. Heritage Farms took me by surprise. I did not expect to like this this much because of how mean it is. And you know, I love mean games. And this is a very mean game because of the, you know, uh, with the way you set up your farmer farmer and their and your um and all your goods, allowing the fox to eat your opponent's uh, uh, chicken or the, the you know the corn messing eating messing it with the with the fox and so forth. It really was a lot of fun and like i said it's a mean nasty little game which is right up my alley um i didn't expect to like this that much and i really really did and again it's a lot of back and forth it could go probably the longest i think monster mashup maybe i think i played one game that was like 30 minutes with monster mashup but heritage farms is really a nice little take that game yeah, i i consider it a take that game because you can purposely mess up your opponent but really really liked heritage farms dice clash was the hardest i think out of all the four rule i don't want to say again none of these are hard uh rules wise but dice clash um i never won a game i was just that whole grid thing you know trying to get uh you know your opponent maybe maybe it's just me uh i just i just suck <laughs> but i still had a lot of fun with this again it's, it's interesting the way um when you roll your dice placing the die when do i want to use the white die to re-roll you know do i want to sacrifice that high number um again the random there's each, each all these dice games including the monster mashup there's ways to mitigate the the dice rolls it's not like it's a straight up luck game and that's what i did like about them but uh yeah i did enjoy dice clash but it was the hardest one for me to grasp i for me personally i think it's the uh the heaviest out of the four and again these are not heavy at all and i really enjoyed uh monster mashup i like the all the different possibilities of mixing the monsters together i would actually like to see an expansion for this i don't know if he will but i would like to see more monsters more mad scientists again a lot of replayability in this little box and of course i, I like the, the the combat the way and the, the that bluffing aspect with the the boost phase you know, choosing how much boost you want to use, using up your energy. Do, do I want to defend? But the problem is if I defend and somebody uses a panic button, it's a pot, you know, that person who uses a panic is going to lose. That added, uh, made the game even more quicker. And I like that little uh, uh, mechanic that he put in there. But yeah, really enjoyed Monster Mashup. So if I had to rate these, which ones from, you know, the one I like the most to uh, the least, 
again, and I like them all. I think they're a lot of fun. I think they're great family games. Uh, you know, it's a game that, these are games that I would take on the road with me, play with my wife. You know, when my son's old, I would really like to, you know, play these with him as well. I think he would get a kick out of them. Um, so my favorite is definitely Monster Mashup. Uh, and second, it almost was my first, it was Heritage Farms. I liked how mean this freaking game is. And, you know, I, I love mean games. The only reason uh, Monster Mashup took the number one spot was because I do like that, um, the combat, the, 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 those battle type games, the, the whole dice mitigation and stuff, and manipulating the dice. And, um, but Heritage Farms was a close second, uh, was a close one. Uh, number uh, three would be Verdant, Arizona. It was, again, it's a pleasant little game. I do like the set collection. I like the uh, the interaction, you know, trying to derail your opponent and making that little puzzle in front of you. But still, a lot of fun to play. And, of course, Dice Clash, number four. Again, I still like this game a lot. I, I still want to play it and try to get better at it. But I did find it uh, the most... Again, there, there is mitigation everywhere, but I did find it the most random, but still a lot of fun. So that is the Minton series of uh, from Galen's Games. I'm going to post a link in the description section to the Kickstarter. So if you're interested in backing these little games, uh, I do highly recommend you check them out. I, I think you're going to enjoy it. And even if, um, you know, for adults, I think adults are going to have a lot of fun with them as well. Uh, so that's going to do it for today, guys. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section. Please like and descri uh, subscribe. This channel is growing every day. Uh, you know, I've been getting sent a bunch of stuff. Uh, and thank you to all the developers, including Galen's, who's been, who have been sending me prototypes and giving me the opportunity to, uh, to review or preview their games. Uh, but hope you guys enjoyed the video. Until next time, have a great one.